A number of years ago, the Kremlin put out an information security circular that banned the use of personal computers, of computers of any type, within Vladimir Putin's inner circle. And these computers were replaced with mechanical typewriters. Now, you might wonder why. Well, because of information security reasons. The Kremlin and the security staff were concerned that any kind of electromagnetic signal emanating from these computers could be used for eavesdropping. Now, electromagnetic signals are emitted from computers and really electronics of any kind, even if they're not connected to a network. In fact, in cybersecurity research, there are a lot of different avenues to exploit computers that are air-gapped, in other words, computers that are not connected to a network. Now, how does this work? Well, when a processor functions, it operates at a certain frequency. And some of these frequencies can be correlated with the execution of certain instructions. Each processor has an instruction set, and by analyzing processors of different types and monitoring their electromagnetic emissions, you can try and figure out what the processor is computing. You can also try and figure out what data is moving on the memory bus and so on and so forth. Now, these are not trivial things to do, but they are possible to do. Similarly, with CRT technology or cathode, cathode ray tube technology with monitors, it was possible to detect the oscillations, the frequency variations that correlated with certain characters being presented on screen. So if you could read these signals and then decode them, you could try and make sense of what was being displayed on a screen, even though you didn't have any actual connectivity with that system. So the point is that with electronics, there's always this issue of electromagnetic leakage. And now sensors are becoming more powerful than they ever have been before. Now, even in the case of mechanical typewriters, the reason why I want to investigate this question a little bit is to demonstrate to you the power of modern day sensors when they're combined with artificial intelligence. And this power, when you combine modern day sensors with AI, makes even mechanical typewriters subject not just to hacking, not just to eavesdropping, but even long distance hacking. And this is going to be an investigation of how we might go about exploiting a system of that type. So just as I was talking about CPUs and the fact that they emit frequencies that might correlate with certain instructions that they're executing, at a much simpler level, every mechanical typewriter makes a sound when you hit a key. And that sound has to do with uh, a mechanical head impacting a ribbon, which then leaves an imprint on a piece of paper. Now, each one of the characters on the head of this mechanical hammer is different. And therefore, you can imagine that the sound of the impact, the precise frequency of the impact as that hammer hits an object, i.e. the paper in this case, is slightly different. It's going to slightly vary. Now, if you were analyzing these acoustic sounds and you were figuring out the signatures and the waveforms that correlated with each one of these, you could probably tell the difference between the click of an A and the clack of a B and so on and so forth. And once you were able to distinguish these sounds, the question, of course, would be, well, how would you know whether something is A or something is B or something is C? Because at this point, you've been able to discern the individual sounds of each one of these typing heads, but you don't necessarily know which character they correspond to. Now there again, we can apply principles of linguistics. We can apply probabilities. So for example, in the English language, we know that certain characters, which we call vowels, occur more frequently than other characters. And so by looking at a large data set, we can figure out, for example, how frequent the letter E is in a large data set. Now, if we listen to a typewriter long enough, the particular sound that corresponds to the probability of E in a data set is likely going to be the character E. And because each character in these large data sets has an individual unique probability, you can now back compute what each one of these sounds actually corresponds to, what each one of these waveforms actually corresponds to. So, so far what we've done 
is we've heard the sound of a mechanical typewriter. We are not connected in any way to this typewriter. We don't have a camera. We don't have any other kind of visual aid. We're not watching over the backs of the typists. We're simply listening to the sounds. And from those sounds, we're able to discern the individual sounds of each one of the characters. But we don't yet know what character it is. Now when we apply the statistical analysis of how frequent characters are in large data sets pertaining to a certain language, we can now back compute which characters are likely to correspond to a particular sound. Okay, but then you might ask, wouldn't I have to be in the same room or fairly close to where this typing is occurring? How else would I hear these sounds? Well, that's where long distance sensing comes in. And it's interesting that acoustics and the waveforms created by acoustics can be picked up through other media, for example, light at long ranges. Now, let me explain how this works. Let's imagine that somebody in the Kremlin is sitting clacking away at a typewriter and there is a window in this room. Now, you can't see the person, nor can you see the typewriter, nor, you, nor can you see what is being typed. But each time a key is hit, a sound is made, there's a minor perturbation of air molecules, which is in fact how sound travels. Now these air molecules go and impact the window. And even though you might not be able to see it, unless the sound is very loud, the window actually moves, it actually vibrates, and it conveys the frequency of the sound that was made when a particular key was typed. Now, this minor perturbation in the window can actually be picked up at a long range. How? Well, you can use a laser beam and reflect it off the window and have it reflected into a sensor. Now, each time the window vibrates, even in a minor way, the window will cause the laser to oscillate also. And because you're receiving a reflection of the laser beam back, you can kind of measure that oscillation, you can kind of measure that perturbation in that beam of light. And each time a different character is typed, a different perturbation will occur. So at a long range, maybe even miles away, you can pick up the very small perturbations in a window caused by air molecules on the other side of the room, caused by the typing of a typewriter. Now, once you've received this light signal back into your uh, receiving apparatus, you can then conduct this machine learning statistical analysis and figure out what characters were typed. Now, of course, the same technology can also be used to simply listen to voices. And in fact, intelligence agencies have used this laser bounce methodology to actually eavesdrop into conversations uh, miles away where they didn't have a sensor placed within the room. So this is an example, a fairly elaborate construct of how powerful sensors, electronics, and machine learning, statistical analysis, can be used to hack mechanical systems that don't even have any electronic componentry, that aren't even connected to a network. So what this is indicative of is the sensorized world. We now live in a world that has so much compute it has so many amazingly uh, fantastical sensors that can monitor various different spectra. They can monitor audio, they can monitor uh, video, they can monitor infrared uh, within visual range of, of a human being outside of that range. And so with these minor variations subject to AI analysis, machine learning analysis, um, pattern matching, this can yield tremendous insights into what's going on in the world. Again, no matter whether the target is participating in a digital exchange, whether the target uses digital systems or not. This sensorized world is a reality, and this is something that requires us to think through what we do, the bounds of secrecy and privacy, and how any of these rules, laws that we construct in future are enforceable because if technology uh, proliferates that allows these uh, boundaries to be crossed easily at low cost, then no matter what the law, it's going to be very difficult to enforce it. Mm -hmm.